Hey there. Welcome to the very first installment of the Alderman Farms Homesteading Instructional Video Series. Those of you who know us know that we like to live as self-sufficiently as possible on a shoestring budget. And so we're going to show you a tip today in our very first uh, video how to set a corner post for a garden fence with no concrete. But it's going to be sturdy. You'll be able to pull it. This is a tip that was taught to me uh, by really our mentor, the gentleman who got us into homesteading and uh, goats and living off the land, Mr. Thomas Carl Stump Easley. And so uh, we're going to dedicate this first video to him and I hope you can, you'll find it useful um, and you'll be able to put it into play right away, set posts without concrete. Ready? Here we go. Obviously, if you're going to set a post, the first thing you have to have is a hole for the post. So we've selected a site where the corner post is going to go. And so I'm going to dig the hole. I'm going to dig it. You need to dig it a little bit bigger than the circumference of your pole. And I'll talk to you more about one certain aspect of the hole that is very important in just a minute. All right, the hole is dug. I've got, my posts are eight feet long. I've dug a three foot hole. I'm gonna sink the poles three feet in the ground, which will leave me five feet of the pole above the ground. Now I chose three feet for a couple of reasons. First of all, you, you, I want you to see that, I don't know if you can see it, I've got a mark on my, on my post hole digger uh, to let me know when I'm three feet deep. By the way, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to dig a post hole, but you do need to have a PhD post hole digger. I'm sorry, that's free. Anyway, a couple of reasons why I chose three foot deep instead of four, instead of half of the pole. Uh, the primary reason is logistics. The, at the three foot mark on my post hole digger, that's about as far as I can go and still get a bite because of the diameter of the hole. Now, I've got a four foot mark up here on this pole. If I want to go four feet, I can. But what needs to happen is I have to make the hole a bunch wider, at least make it slope down on one side so I can open my post hole diggers wide enough to get a bite of dirt. So that's one reason. Second reason I'm sinking them three feet to leave five feet of pole on top. The fence that we're putting on these poles is four feet high. That'll leave me a foot of post uh, past the fence if I decide to add one string of barbed wire above the fence. Remember at the beginning I told you there was very, one important aspect of the hole that I would talk to you about when I got to it. Well now's the time. And that is that the back side of the hole, and what I mean by back side is the side of the hole away from the pulley. All right, in this case on this post, we're gonna be nailing fence onto this post and we're gonna be pulling it that way. The force is gonna be pulling that way against this post. And so the back side of this hole, this side of the post, needs to be straight. You need, of course, all sides need to be straight, but this side needs to be straight because that's the back side of this hole at the bottom is, is important to support against the bottom of the pole. As the fence begins to pull, the top of the pole is going to go, want to go that way, the bottom is going to go that way. So, it may seem a little counterintuitive at first, but when you think about it in terms of the action of the pole against the pulling force, then it makes sense. The back side of this hole needs to be straight so that at the bottom, against the back side of that pole, there's sufficient resistance against the pulling force of the fence when we go to install the fence. Now, the key to the success of this system is gonna take place uh, in a few minutes up near top of this hole, but I'm going to save that secret for a few minutes. Before we get to that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to back, start backfilling this clay just about an inch at a time, and I've got a stick, and I'm going to start tamping that clay down good and tight, good and tight, round and round and round, around the outside of that pole. And I'm going to do that just a little bit at a time to make sure it's good and tight, round and round and round, until I get up, oh, about six inches from the, uh, the top of the hole. 
And then we're gonna do something else, and that's, that's install the secret device that's gonna make this pole sturdy against the pulling force of the fence being installed. All right, we've backfilled the hole about an inch at a time, tamping it down nice and firmly, uh, about every inch or so. And we've done that, I've done that up to about four inches from the top. I said six inches uh, before I uh, got off of film. Hey Toby, what's up? Um, because if you're, if, if you're gonna be doing a long pull, you're gonna be uh, holding in livestock or whatnot, I would recommend coming up six inches, uh, uh, excuse me, six inches from the top. But this is a small garden fence, so I'm only coming up four inches because, why do I need that? Here's why, because here's the key to this system. In fact, Mr. Stump called it a key. He said keying, uh, he described it as keying a post. And I'm gonna tell you, after you've got that, that uh, dirt tamp back in there, especially this clay-based soil, this post is pretty firm even even without doing this key. But to hold off the pressure of uh, pulling a fence uh, from this post, it needs some added stability. So I'm gonna take a two by four. Now this needs to be a treated two by four. It's not a treated two by four because I don't have a treated two by four. So I didn't cut it to any length. I found it in the barn, it's a piece of scrap. And so I'm gonna use it at the length that it is. Now I'm gonna come down here, remember, this is the way that we're gonna be pulling the fence. So I'm gonna line it up on this post perpendicular to uh, the line of force. I'm gonna bring it down here to the ground. I'm gonna tilt it up a little bit on a corner. I'll explain that in a minute. And I'm gonna basically scribe a line in the dirt so I can tell what I need to do with my PhD, with my post hole digger. Now, I've kind of, I can see the, the imprint of where that board was. Now, I'm going to take my post hole diggers and I'm going to cut that out uh, the, a little bit deeper than the width of this 2x4 because I want to be able to cover it up and not have it exposed. The reason I put it on a tilt like this is because I need this 2x4, once I get this slot cut out, as you'll see in a minute, I want to have to drive this 2x4 down in this hole. I don't want it to just fall down in there because then it'll, it'll allow play with the pole. So if I do it flat like this, the hole's gonna be too wide. So I'm actually doing it like this so, it's, so that I'm gonna dig a little bit narrower than the width of the two by four. So I have to take a maul and drive this thing in there. So let's do that now. We're gonna, I'm gonna dig the hole and I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, hole's dug. And I'm gonna tell you, that's not, it's not gonna be quite as tight a fit as I would've liked. I wasn't thinking about it. I should've got my, I've got a, that, that's a heavy set of post hole diggers uh, to dig big old giant holes with. And they're hard to kind of be precise. I've got a lighter pair uh, that, I, that I normally use for this process. And I just wasn't thinking I should've got them and I could've been more pre precise with the hole for this key. But I think it's gonna work. And I've got it, I do have it tight enough where it won't just fit down in there. So I've got my, my wood splitting maul that I can drive it down where I want it, nice and tight. And so that's what we're doing. Driving it down below the ground. There it is. Now there's, there's one more step. If I, again, if I were doing a, a very long fence pull, where there's gonna be lots of pressure, big heavy fence and so forth over a long distance. That is, I would, I would dig out an area right here and I'd take me two 16 penny nails and drive it through the two by four uh, or two by six. If it was a big long strand, by the way, that's what I meant to tell you. I, I was able to do just a two by four here, but on a long pull, I'd do a two by six. And I'd take two or three 16 penny nails and drive into that uh, nail this board to the post. Reason being is when you fix the uh, the fence to the post and, and you go to pulling, it could have a tendency to twist. It's going to hold it and keep the pole from moving this way, but it could twist. If you drive nails through that board, it'll, it'll eliminate that possibility. One more thing, some of you may have already thought about this. This is not going to be a true corner. I've got a little short strand coming off of this side too, so I'm not worried about it. 
But if this were a true corner where you had put, you were pulling fence at a great strain on both sides, what about what's going to keep the pole from going from going this way? Well, here's the deal: you do two. I would sink this this uh, this key twice as deep to give me room to put another one on top of this one going this way. Now, all that remains is the backfill, and we'll be done. <laughs> well, there you have it. She's in the ground. It'd take a team of mules to pull it out of there. All because of Mr. Stump. <laughs> that old fellow knew some things. I hope you learned something. Uh, I believe you can put this to use right now today. Uh, save you money. Takes a little effort. Um, but it's sturdy without concrete. I hope you enjoyed our first uh, video lesson in the Alderman Farms homesteading instructional video series. Email us if we can help you in any way. And uh, be on the lookout. More videos coming soon. Happy homesteading.